Hey guys, let's build a classic retro game called Brick Breaker. We'll have a look at the code and I'll explain to you how it works. And by the end of this video, you will have your very own version of the classic Brick Breaker game. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is download the Pi Game module. So in your terminal, go ahead and type pip install Pi Game and press enter. That should begin the download process. Once the installation is completed, let's go ahead and import Pi Game into our program. Next, we're going to initialize Pi Game with the pygame.int. Next, we're going to create a variable and then we're going to call it size. And we're going to set it to 600 by 600. Then we're going to create another variable and we're going to call it screen and we're going to set it to Pi Game display set mode and in brackets size. Now this tells Pi Game how big we want our screen to be and it checks that through the size variable we created earlier. Next, we're going to create a caption on top of the screen so that the user knows what game they are playing. It's not necessary, but it's for aesthetic purposes. So we're going to say pygame.display.set caption, and in here you can type in whatever you want your caption to be. I'm going to keep mine simple and say brick breaker game. Next, we're going to create a variable and we're going to call it floor. And we're going to set it to pygame react, and in brackets, we're going to have 100, 500, 200, and 10. Now what this does is that it creates a rectangle-like object using the rect class which is provided by Pygame. These rectangles are what the ball is going to try and hit. Next we're going to create another variable and we're going to call it ball. And we're going to set it to Pygame, React and in brackets we're going to have 50, 250, 10 and 10. Now what this line does is that it creates another rectangle-like object using the rect class. Now this is going to represent the ball in the game. Next, we're going to create a variable and we're going to call it score and we're going to set it to zero. We're going to use this variable to keep track of the score. Then we're going to create another variable and we're going to call it move. And we're going to set it to a pair of open and close square brackets and we're going to have one and negative one in them. Then we're going to create another variable and we're going to call it continue game and we're going to set it to true. Now this variable will be used to keep the game playing. We're going to create a variable and we're going to call it green and we're going to set it to 28, 252 and 106. Then we're going to create another variable and we're going to call it white. We're going to set it to 255, 255 and 255. Next we're going to have a variable and we're going to call it black and we're going to set it to triple zero. Then we're going to have a pink variable and we're going to set it to 252, 3 and 152. We're going to have an orange variable and we're going to set it to 252, 172 and 28. And we're going to have one last variable that we're going to call red and we're going to set it to 255 and 00. zero. Now what we have just created is called RGB which stands for red, green, blue, the primary colors used in additive color models. Each color component is represented by an integer ranging from 0 to 255 which indicates the intensity of that color component. 0 being a lower intensity and 255 being a higher intensity. Now these color values can be used in Pygame to set the colors of various game elements such as drawing shapes, text or backgrounds. Now Pygame's drawing function often takes color values as arguments to determine the color of the drawn object on the game screen. We're going to use these a bit later. Next we're going to start creating the bricks for the ball to destroy. For the purposes of this tutorial I'm going to have 3 rows each with 6 blocks. So to start we're going to have a variable called b1 and in square brackets we're going to say Pygame React 1 plus i and a star symbol then 100, 60, 98 and 38. Then we're going to create a for loop and we're going to say for i in range 6. Now I'm going to copy this line and paste it two more times because the next lines are going to be the same. But we're going to change a few things. Like we're going to have b2 and instead of having 60 we're going to have another 100. And in the last one we're going to have b3 and instead of having 60 we're going to have 140. Next we're going to draw the bricks onto the screen. So we're going to create a function and we're going to call it draw brick and in this function we're going to have a for loop. So we're going to say for i in bricks, i gain draw rack and in brackets we're going to have screen and after this you can have them in whatever color you want your bricks to be. I'm going to make mine orange but you can have them in whatever color you want. And at the end we're going to have an i. Next we're going to create a while loop and we're going to say while continue gain. And in this while loop, we're going to have a for loop and we're going to say for event in pygame event get. Next, we're going to create an if statement that goes if event type equals pygame.quit, continue game equals false. Now this is the main game loop that handles events. Then we're going to create the screen fill function and in brackets, we're going to have black. Now this is going to be the background color of the game. Next, we're going to say pygame draw rack and in brackets, we're going to say screen pink and floor. Now what this does, it creates a little board that the ball is going to bounce off. Now mine is going to be pink, but you can have it in whatever color you want. 
Next, we're going to create a variable and we're going to call it font. And we're going to set it to pygame.font.font and in brackets, we're going to say none, 34. Now this line creates a font object using pygame's font class. It allows you to specify the font style and size to use when rendering text onto the game. Now in this line, we have set the font to none, which means the default system font will be used. And then the size of the font is 34, indicating that the text rendered using the object's font will have this font size of 34 pixels. Next, we're going to create a variable and we're going to call it text and we're going to set it to font render and in brackets, we're going to say current score and we're going to have Pygame tell the user what the current score in real time is. And we're going to have this in the color green. Then we're going to say screen blitz text 180 and 10. Now this line is going to be used to draw the rendered text onto the game screen at the specific position. The next part is going to control the floor slash board. So we're going to say if event type equals pygame key down. And we're also going to say if event equals pygame k right. And if floor x is less than 540, floor x is equal to floor x plus 3. Then we're going to say if event key equals pygame key left. If floor x is greater than 0, floor x equals floor x minus 3. Now this basically tells pygame that the right key press should move the board to the right and the left key press should move the board to the left. Next, we're going to draw bricks onto the screen. So we're going to say draw brick and in brackets, we're going to say B1. And I'm going to copy this line and paste it twice. And the only thing I'm going to change is B1 to B2 and B1 to B3. The next part is going to work the ball. So I'm going to say ball X equals ball X plus move. And in square brackets, we're going to have zero. Then we're going to say ball Y equals ball Y plus move and in square brackets, we're going to have one. So basically, these lines essentially apply the velocity or movement of the ball to update its position each frame of the game loop. In this code, ball x represents the current x coordinate of the ball and ball y represents the current y coordinate of the ball. By adding corresponding values from the move list to the current coordinates, the position of the ball is updated. Next, we're going to create an if statement. That says, if ball is greater than 590 or ball x is less than 0, move 0 equals minus move 0. Then we're going to create another if statement that says, if ball y is less or equal to 3, move 1 equals minus move 1. Then we're going to say, if floor collide point ball x, ball y, move 1 equals minus move 1. This portion of the code handles the collisions of the ball with the walls, floor, and the pedal or floor. By handling these collisions, the code ensures that the ball interacts with the game boundaries and the pedal correctly, resulting in a realistic bouncing behavior and a gameplay in the brick breaker game. Next, we're going to create another if statement and we're going to say if ball y is greater or equal to 590, basically this code checks if the ball has missed the board. If it has, we're going to say font equals pi game font font and in brackets, we're going to say none 74. Now, like I said earlier, the none refers to the default pi game font and the 74 refers to the size of the font. Next, I'm going to create another variable and I'm going to call it text. And we're going to set it equal to font render. And in brackets, we're going to have game over one and red. Now, if the board has missed the ball, we're going to have it print game over in red. Now, you can have this in whatever color you want, but I'm going to keep mine red. Next, we're going to say screen blitz text 150 and 300. Then we're going to create another variable and we're going to call it font. And we're going to set it to pie game font font and in brackets, we're going to have none 50. We're going to create another variable and we're going to call it text and we're going to set it to font render and in brackets, your final score plus one. And I want this in green. Now this part tells you what your final score was and it prints in the green color if you lose. Then we're going to say screen blitz text 100 and 350. Then we're going to say pie game display flip. Now this will do a cool animation to the text and the game when you lose. Then we're going to say pie game time wait and in brackets, we're going to have 5,000. Now this line introduces a delay or pause in the execution of the program for a specific number of milliseconds. In this case, it pauses the program for 5,000 milliseconds, which is equivalent to five seconds. Then we're going to say break. We're going to say pi game draw rect and in brackets, we're going to have screen white ball. This line will display a white screen at the end of the game. For the next part, we're going to tell pi game what's going to happen if the ball collides with the blocks. So we're going to start off by creating a for loop. We're going to start off by saying for i in b1, if collide points ball x, ball b1 remove i. Move 0 equals move minus 0, move 1, move minus 1. 
Then we're going to create a variable and we're going to call it score. And we're going to set it equal to score plus one. Now this part checks if the ball has collided with any blocks in the first row. If so, PyGain should remove that block and add one to the score. I'm going to copy this block and paste it two more times. And the only thing I'm going to change is B1 to B2 and B1 to B3. But it does the exact same thing. The only difference is that it checks for the different rows. Now we're going to create an if statement that goes if score equals 18. And we're going to have the font variable in this if statement. And we're going to set it to pygame font font. And in brackets, we're going to have 74. And we're going to create another variable and we're going to call it text. And we're going to set it to font render. And in brackets, we're going to have you won the game and in green. And then we're going to say screen blitz text 150 and 350. Then we're going to say pygame display flip. Then we're going to say pygame time wait 3000. And finally, we're going to say break. Now this function works the same way as one we created earlier on that checks if the person has lost the game. But this time this function checks if the person has won the game. And it does this by checking if the score is equal to 18 because there are 18 blocks then the user has won. Then it's going to print this you won message. We're going to say pygame time wait one and we're going to say pygame display flip. Now this is going to wait for one split second before doing a flipping animation to the window. Then we're going to say pygame.quit. Now this tells pygame to terminate because it has reached the end of the game. Now let's go ahead and run the program. As you can see, we have three rows of orange blocks on top and we've got our pink floorboard thing down near the bottom in our ball. Now this is a very fun nostalgic game that you can play and test your programming skills. Now you can obviously tweak it and make it better. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed or found this video helpful in any way, shape or form, then consider leaving a like and subscribing. Turn on post notifications to be the first to know when I upload a new video. Also, if you have any constructive criticism or any questions or anything, comment them down below. And until next time, thanks for watching. Peace.